Welcome to Lift, stories of what people do and their impact on the world. Today, I'm talking with Jason Croft of Croft Media. Hello, hello. And the Jason Croft Show. That's right. So take a few minutes and tell us what you do. I simply put Croft in front of anything I do and <laughs> name it and make a company around it. No. Um, I promise I'm not that obnoxious. There's strategic reasons behind it all. Uh, but Croft Media is a video agency that really specializes in this type of, of video work, the authority interviews, I like to call them, which we work with, especially with um, consultants and other solopreneurs, and really help them take their credibility and authority that they already have and make sure that remains as they move into video because they know that they've got to jump in there and level up. And then with the Jason Croft show, that is a uh, fun online show. Um, we're on YouTube and, and iTunes where we throw CEOs and company founders and sales and marketing folks into a moving vehicle and uh, force them to give us some great insights and, and tactics. Yeah, it's car time. I, ha I have to tell you though, I have watched a few of the sessions and I always get nervous that you're going to miss a turn or <laughs> run into something or... <laughs> I get nervous watching how much I still talk with my hands even though I'm driving. It'll make you nervous too. But it's the interviews are great. Yeah, and car Thank time you. is good. It is. I mean, it's always good to close somebody in the car and not let them out till you get the information out of them. That's the right. Way. And it's, it's just a fun, relaxed environment um, and a little different take on it while we talk about serious nuggets yeah. and... and Interesting, yeah, interesting uh, tactics. Yeah, you, you, I think people will enjoy them. Um, I also know that there's something about you with wild animals. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my, my wife calls me animal dumb because instead of, I guess, many people's natural reaction to go like the other way, I right. usually go towards them. Towards the wild animal? Yeah, that's, that's fun. Been to Alaska a couple life? of times. No, really since um, probably 06. I had a, one of the absolute best productions I ever was a part of was um, we, we shot a pilot for a reality show down in Snake Farm, down in Nacogdoches. And at the time, a new owner had just bought the place. And so it was a great little concept reality show. And so I met the owner there and we hung out there for a week and then shot up here in Pilot Point. It's another wildlife ranch. Um, and besides, so down State Farm, besides every venomous snake that exists in the world, um, there's a bunch of stories there. Out back are the monkeys, um, wolves. At the Snake Farm? Yeah, hyenas. And it was so much fun. Like every day, I would just make the round. I would come in a little bit early and I would just make the rounds, pet the wolves, pet the hyenas, like do, see the lemurs. Are they tame? They can't be tame. Every animal's tame. That's my. They're not. They just need They're pets. They're not. You and so my, clearly have not been on safari in South Africa. They're not tame. <clears throat> hyenas are they the worst. Just, they just need pets. Well, the hyenas I was petting <laughs> proved my point. <laughs> and uh, my buddy up here in Pilot Point, he's got uh, a couple of black bears, and so I've been in there with them um, quite a bit. We can share more stories. Fun. We may just have a whole another session just to talk about wild animals. Yeah. My we, husband lived with a black bear for a while because we are Baylor Bears, and his go. roommate was the bear trainer. They're <laughs> nice. stinky. What I want to tell you is they're really stinky. But they're very nice, <laughs> as long as they're outside. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a whole other show on this one. <laughs> we will. I chased them in Alaska, too, so I've been around this a while. It's so <laughs> okay. good. Your wife calling you Animal Dumb, I think, is good. I think that's probably a good name. Yeah. Anyway. Rude. I know. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so, one of the things I do want people to hear about, besides wild animals, mm -hmm. is um, you've been in business now for yourself for how many years? Freelancing, 25 years now. Yeah, so a yeah. long time. You have a, a breadth of experience underneath you as far as doing that kind of work. And we have a lot of people who come into office who are entrepreneurs or doing startup companies. And so I'm curious. This, let's just say you're riding up an elevator. You've 30 seconds. They know you've been in business for yourself for 25 years. And they say, hey, Jason, what advice would you give me? I'm thinking about going into business for myself. What would you sure. tell them? <laughs> Don't do it. No. <laughs> Never. I no. actually, I, I preach the opposite quite a bit. Um, the, the biggest thing. The biggest blind spot, I think, for anybody transitioning from working full time or even right out of college 
and then going into either freelance or running their own business um, is the tax side of things, is always preparing that side of things because especially for those working a full-time job their whole lives, getting a W-2 and, you know, taxes are taken out, yep. and, you know, when you're in business for yourself, like that's completely your responsibility. So you've got to think of that as, you know, th even with write-offs, 30 to 40 percent, put that away because you've got to pay it at some point. Right. <laughs> and that's the, that's one of the biggest yeah. uh, blind spots, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And, and it can be such a big surprise when you first start. Oh yeah. 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 Because so even when you know it intellectually, when that's it right. doesn't really you hit. Think, that's until... right. You think, oh, we'll get that later. We'll get that next time. Exactly. And then all of a sudden it's, whoa. Yeah. Right. Or you could do like us and we have a, a woman uh, who does all of our accounting and she makes sure we turn every receipt in. And so she, nice. yeah, because we're not that good at it. So we have someone holding our feet to the fire. So. I need that too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, because you've been in business that long, clearly you have discovered the best way to promote yourself and your business. What What is that best way? Um, I mean, the, the greatest way I've found and really honestly stumbled into starting with the, I worked for a production company for five or six years. And, and really the best way of that self-promotion and marketing is, is the show. Um, mm -hmm. The show I have now was, is my second one started one in, when I was at that production company interviewing we had a studio shoot it's called startup Dallas very specific audience right so it was exactly who we wanted to go and and target as a company and it did that first show did three things for me it did exactly that it got me a seat at the table in the startup community it's just like wow here's somebody shining a spotlight and I mean I was known instantly throughout there to it, um, you know, it really built an amazing network, right? <laughs> I mean, of people and incredible people, because when you sit across from somebody for an hour during an interview, I mean, you build that relationship there. And um, the third thing it did was, for me, was it lit something up in me like, yeah. I love this, I've got to keep doing it. And that's why I'm still doing the show now. But that format, and whether it's an audio podcast or a video show or... You, I, you could even do this with a, a written blog. It's one of the absolute greatest sales tactics and techniques to really build um, to build a network, get through gatekeepers, and you have an audience with somebody and, and really get to know them. Yeah. It's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I can see that. And plus, when you have them trapped, you can ask them anything you want to. <laughs> That's right. Right? Like this. Put them on the spot. I'm trapped. The light's shining in my face. I actually have handcuffs on my ankles right now. <laughs> Which brings us to the rapid fire questions. <laughs> now you get to answer. Nice. You get to be on the other side of the table. I know. Answer them. Are you ready? I don't appreciate that. <laughs> oh, but you do. This one's easy. I'm going to start real easy for you. Describe your best day. What does that look like for you? So my ideal day would be, um, you know, waking up super early in a small mountain town. Um, I've got the, I mean, can see the house and, and everything. I've thought about this in, yeah. in the past, certainly. And, um, you know, even if it's I'm still, you know, working, kids are still in school, doing that kind of thing. But getting up early, having my own routine, um, taking the two oldest to school, my youngest to work with me, you know, um, and just spending about half a day in the office with him and, and, going to have lunch together, take him home, get a little work done on my own, pick up the, the other boys and great evening at home. And that does include some work in there. I think, you know, I've got kind of a workday version and a weekend yeah. version, but, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a, for me, I need that outdoors. I'm certainly working towards a good part of my life being out there. So. Texas is a great outdoor state. <laughs> <laughs> It's there are a lot of outdoors. We have a lot of sunshine. <laughs> yes. And that's the, it, it, honestly, it's a tough part because I love uh, Dallas Fort Worth so much. I mean, there's, yeah. it's just everything here. So I think part of that's going to be part time, part time someplace like Colorado and part time, part time here. Yeah. I'll go for that one. Part time <laughs> Colorado is good. <laughs> what is your key to productivity? Oh, goodness. Um, that one's tough. Um, the, 
the time I'm best at it is when I absolutely make a schedule of my day. Um, because a pile of to-do list, I've got to do that too. I've got to get it out of my head and have that there. But the best, and it's the hardest for me to do, and I'm not entirely sure why, but the hardest thing um, is making myself, you know, from nine to 10, you're doing this, from 10 to 11, you know, and leaving some space, leaving some room to breathe, but I'm always, I get the most done. If you actually block out your time. Absolutely, it, absolutely, it's it's huge. Um, so I don't know what that little that little fight is to, that keeps me from doing that more. I think because reality, it's it's a dose of reality, right? You right. sit there and you're like, I, and then I only have four things on here. Right. <laughs> but you know that that's right because that's what that's you need what to it be takes. Productive. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. Yeah, that's a, that's a hard one. Yeah, we could talk about that one. We could do a whole <laughs> video on that one too. About how to block yeah. out your day. Absolutely. So yeah. All right. What is one foundational business principle that you are committed to executing? Hmm. I've heard a hundred of these. <laughs> you think I'd have an answer? <laughs> I know. I was thinking you were standing behind the camera. <laughs> I was Thank thinking you. about the other ones. I didn't think about this one. Actually, I was thinking about it a little bit yesterday or the day before when we were doing these. I was like, well, I don't really know. And then I didn't think about it again. <laughs> <laughs> one foundational business principle that you're committed to executing. I, don't know. I would say it's joy. Is that a business it, principle? It is because I think when you have fun, people have more fun. And you, you appear to have enjoy what you do and sure. it's contagious. And it makes people relax in front of the camera. And I would just say that's what I see coming out of you, is that you have enjoy what you do. You make other people enjoy the process with you. And I think that I see that in you, well, thank you. pretty much every day. Well, there, you. I answered the question for Jason. I'll take that. Yeah, it's a good one. I got a better one. Mine is joy. <laughs> I think that really... Oh. It's good, I think. See, I get to edit. So I can just edit out. <laughs> I think that's a good answer for you. All right, next. But you can come back to that one and answer your own, but that's my answer for you. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it does. It puts us at ease on the other side of the camera because we're not used to it. All right, do you have a personal or business mission state or an overall philosophy that you kind of follow? I do. I, I mean, I've put together, for me, what's a mission statement that I've since been corrected from my... Uh, my one of my business coaches, they, he's like, that's more of a vision, and I'll I'll just let you know. So for me, it's it's connection. So I've I've as I've explored everything that I do and then enjoy doing, it's it all revolves around connection. So it's me connecting with other people. It's me connecting two people together. Um, it's connecting people to to new ideas, and then connecting businesses to their ideal clients and prospects. Um, and that distinction, I understand his distinction too, is, is that's over, kind of to your to your point, that overarching you know philosophy and that vision of life. I, I think there's a higher level mission with quantifiable, right? You know, here's how you get there and milestones and stuff. Um, and I'm, I think I'm working on that <laughs> a little bit and what that'll be. Um, but that vision side of things for me is is connection and everything I. I do tends to revolve around that. So, so and um, how does that play out with your your business? How does that? How does connecting? How does that impact what you do on the? It's everything. Um, so for me, I still remember years ago listening to the Tipping Point, Malcolm Gladwell, mm -hmm. and he talked about people he described as connectors, or maybe mavens, even um, the the connectors in there who just. You, you know, get to those people because they know everybody. You know those people in your life. Right. And I still remember just thinking about, like, I do know people like that. I want to be that. I want to be that person. And I was so far from that <laughs> person. You have no idea. And, I mean, I was the person that, you know, went to a networking event. If I ever went, it was just... In the corner. Oh, I stood against the wall and hoped somebody talked to me and all that. Um and I made a decision. I was like, I want to be that. And so for me, it's that connection is everything and, and all those those versions of it because that's what leads to business and sales. And that's who, I mean, you talked about 
being behind the camera, making somebody comfortable. That that plays out in my job here to do that. Is that connection? It plays out in the show to mm-hmm. connect to somebody and to, to help them connect to the audience. And that ultimately, that's what that's what drives business and everything is that connection. connection. So you can you know do business with people you enjoy being around. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's everything. And then one of my absolute greatest joys in life is connecting two people together. Mm-hmm. It's the greatest thing in the world. Uh, I'm getting chills talking about. It. Like it's so much fun because I'm constantly introducing. Like you have to know this person, and I've got you know a, a good list of people now who like I don't even have to go and say like hey I'm kind of you know I met so and so would you like me to introduce like they're just like if you're introducing me like just introduce us like yeah. period and to hear you know and then I'll get the feedback later it's like oh this person was amazing we're doing this deal or this is you know and that just that lights me up cool so cool I can see how that would work I can see you doing it too <laughs> all right um I think you answered the greatest joy question that clearly that's right there you go right yeah so what impact do you hope that your work has beyond, you know, making money? Um, well, and, and, and I know it doesn't even have to be a hope, but um, I've been able to, to see it both with the show and with the videos that I make both is a chance to put other people in this spotlight right here. And then, you know, I get that feedback when it's the videos I make for folks that Oh, oh wow! The, the, even when they see their first reaction of like, I don't look too bad, you know, <laughs> and they have that feeling of like, I I know what I'm talking about, you know, because we do we work through them and we create a beautiful picture with it all, but then also really get their true essence out and their knowledge out. Um, and then with the show, it's it really is a chance for them to to you know sit and talk about themselves and really have another platform to to point people to and it really does bring people's credibility up and their authority like I've been on a show I mean it's yeah it's happening with the Jason Croft show as well but you know you know especially with Startup Dallas that was the first one and I just I remember we did 80 something episodes of that oh wow and I still remember that feeling of I mean people were constantly like hey can I be on can I be on can I be on and that feeling of like you know this is just a little YouTube iTunes show, right? right. <laughs> you know, that, that voice in my head thinking that, but it didn't matter because it was about the product and it was about yeah. that opportunity. Yeah. So. That's cool. Very encouraging for other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Last question. What is your favorite thing about working at the lift office and how has it benefited you either as an individual or for your business? Oh, wow. Well, um, certainly having having this the the space to come and be just having an office space having that square footage of desk it is mine <laughs> that i can go to and leave the house i'm 45 seconds from home i have a 45 second commute shortest uh, commute of anybody yeah it's fantastic um but it's also it just doesn't work for me working at home so number one just being an office space is great but it's set up and run so that you can be as involved community, other people around, or not as you want. And, and that's what I think is really great for me because I go through times like I need this. To, we talked about focus. Like I've got to, nobody talk to me. I've got to do right. this. And it's so great when you can have that. But when you also then come out of that, even if it's once a day or twice a day, like, oh, awesome. Other people are around yeah. and, you know, you can talk to somebody in the kitchen and have that human interaction. I, I think it's really the perfect blend of those two things. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Of course, I think that about all of our members, but it is true. <laughs> it is true. It's nice to have a place to be focused, but it's also nice not to be so isolated because yeah. that can get old too. Yeah. So, yeah. so sure. I'm really thankful you're here. Well, thank you. I'm glad love, to be here. I love having you at the lift office. You do light the place up and bring great... <laughs> and, literally. Literally. Huh? And bring great connections. So, yeah, you, I, I see how you live that out here. So, Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for more interviews with amazing people who are impacting the world. Or better yet, come on by. I'd love to introduce you to them. 
I'll have the coffee hot and I'll be happy to take you on a tour. See you soon.